it, the word collections is is what you're using to describe collections of devices or people or or both, depending on how you do things, which seems to really be at the heart of this. What are some of the more common collection use cases? What what are our listeners going to hear you say and go, ah, that's I yeah. need to do that. That makes sense to me. Yeah. So there's a couple of things that come to mind. One is we think it's going to be very common for someone to create the collection for all employees. Right. So so it's just the baseline. I want everybody to get on the Wi-Fi. Um, I want everybody to have this set of apps. So it's that combination of apps and settings that no matter what function you have in the company, we want you to have this. Got it. So that's one example. The beauty of these collections is that you can layer them on top of each other. So you might have that baseline and then you've got the design team or the engineering team or the accounting team, and they just have a, a different set of apps from everybody else. And so you can start to create these collections of apps for different functions that, again, because they're in the accounting group, again, it might be an accounting group of two people, sure, you and the accountant, but still you've got that collection that you can create that is the custom set of software that they might want to uh, be given access to. So you- as you. Go ahead. Uh, one, one more I'll give you is as you start to move up market a little bit more and you start to get into a, a company that might have multiple locations, that becomes another great sort of filter that you would apply, right? This branch has a different Wi-Fi network. Maybe we need VPN over here. And so you start to see those things get established where you've got these different groupings of people where they just need different things. Uh, and that's how we kind of think that these collections will get created and then ultimately layered on top of each other.